In this episode, in my series on the bones of Unreal, we're diving into IK bones. When you want them and how we can use them to direct our limbs to all the right places. Let's have a look. IK, standing for inverse kinematics, are a type of unweighted invisible bones that are typically used to direct the limbs of your character to a specific location. We can use IK this way to reverse engineer the required rotations of the chain of parent bones that belongs to your selected bone. You will often see them attached to the root bone and prefixed with IK underscore, and often exist for hands, feet, and weapons. IK can be considered the opposite of forward kinematics, which is what you are probably more familiar with, where you animate each joint in a chain, affecting all chine bones recursively as you do so. Now I first want to state that your project likely does not need IK bones. They represent a conventional way of solving a number of problems that I will go into detail with, but these days those problems can and often should be solved using simple variables or virtuables instead. So I'll be giving an overview of the use cases for IK bones I have found and what the alternatives are. The first use case I want to mention is that IK bones might be helpful when you author animations in certain third-party software. One example could be having a bone representing a two-handed weapon. We could then attach a preview mesh to this bone and constrain the hands to it such that you can move the weapon itself as part of your animation and have the animation software IK the hands to where they need to hold the weapon. This way we don't have to constantly fiddle with our hands to keep them aligned on a, on a weapon. But it's worth noting that this use case doesn't necessarily necessitate keeping the IK bones as part of the skeleton when they're imported into Unreal Engine. Now let's look at a use case of how we can use IK bones to keep two hands on a weapon, even when the weapon can only be properly attached to one hand at a time. I'm using the template ALS character here, which is basically just a UE4 mannequin skeleton, but you can follow along with any humanoid skeleton you might be using. If you're using the UE5 mani skeleton, we already have the IK bones that I'll be using here. But if you need to add the IK bones, it can be done easily in the Unreal Engine skeletal editor, which is a plugin you'll need to enable. Then to add them, you simply open your skeletal mesh. Note that we're not opening the skeleton itself. Then we hit the button to edit skeleton and we can add the IK bones, for example, for your hands directly to your root, which will work fine for most cases. But Unreal has a convention of where we first add a common root bone for your hands named IK underscore hand underscore root, followed by another single root bone called IK underscore hand underscore gun then followed by the two bones for your hands, which is IK underscore hand underscore L slash R. We can then position the default bone position somewhere that are easier to find, but this is not really that important. The reason we add these two root slash parent bones in the hierarchy is so we can animate both hand bones at once, or animate the bone for a two-handed weapon, like I mentioned with the animation software. So the core idea is that we first have some way to move the IK bones in a precise way we like. This can be part of the animation data, but it could also be done with code. Then we have the arms and hands positioned themselves in such a way that the hands end up at the exact location of the IK bones. So I already have some animations here that, as part of them, move the IK bones. It may look like the IK bones are attached to the hands, but they aren't really. The animation was just created in such a way that the IK hands and the hands themselves move along together perfectly, which is the typical approach you see. So why do we even need the IK bones if the hands are already placed correctly? Well, that's because of issues like swimming, which is when you have multiple animations added together, causing an inconsistent movement of the hands, for example, holding a weapon, as we can see in our simple animation blueprint here. It happens because our breathing animation moves the arms in a specific posture, and now when we add some relative rotations from the additive animation, that is relative to some other pose, so the end result is that the two hands are no longer synchronized. Each hand now moves in a different reference frame, which is the result of a chain of reference frames. This is just one of the quirks of how rotation propagates through a chain of joints. And it's also the reason we have to deal with things like gimbal locks and quaternions, if you're familiar with those. So let's see how we can get the hands to move to the position of the IK bones to solve this issue. We can do this straight in the animation graphs with two bone IK, where the IK is the bone we want to move, which is the hand in this case. The effector is where we want that bone to go, which is then in bone space, and then we can choose our IK bone as the target. It's also possible and even recommended to do this using control rig. I'll show you how to do the equivalent control rig in the virtual bone episode of this series. Speaking of virtual bones, one thing to note here is that we don't actually need IK bones to solve swimming. It can be done instead with virtual bones, 
which can be used even without requiring IK bones being added to the animation and can be more flexible. But I still wanted to show you how it can be done with IK bones. I also just want to make a quick note of these extra local to and from component nodes here. These are necessary as the animation blueprint operates in the local space of bones normally, while the two bone IK nodes require being in component space, which is often also called the global space or mesh space. But don't confuse it with world space. So now with these two nodes, we can see that the hands now stay on the rifle like we want them to, as the IK bones are not affected by this cumulative error from a chain of bones that the hands have. And since we just request moving the hands to the IK bones, the problem is solved. Since the IK bones are animated in the breathing animation we used as the additive, we get their relative motion in global space added to the rifle pose. So we still have our natural breathing animation laid on top. You could choose not to move your IK bones for your additive animations, which would result in the hands not moving at all, which may or may not be desired. Okay, for the next use case, I want to demonstrate how we can use IK bones to move our hands to the target location that we specify at runtime. To do this, we'll move the IK bones with code instead and use intermediate animation blueprint variables, but this can also be done with control rig. So to demonstrate this, I've created this simple pickup animation for which we'll procedurally change the right hand to reach out for any object we want it to. So now we have the animation in engine and we're going to create what's called an animation curve, which can be used to have animations drive data over time. The data we'll define is a float, which will determine when and by how much the hand should be moving towards the IK target. You could use the already existing IK hand bones for this, but just to keep things separate, I'll create a new set of IK bones for this purpose. I'm not following any conventions here, but I'll call them IK underscore world underscore hand underscore R. Then we can update the animation blueprint to simply play this pickup animation. And let's keep it simple and leave the left hand alone here. For the right hand though, we wanted to follow the new world IK bone, and we can see it's working right away. We aren't moving this brand new IK bones in either animation or code, so the hand stays in the default IK position we defined. Now we want to position the IK bones where we want it. We can do that in component space by using the transform bone node. We set it to modify the world bone and we tell it to override the translation, which is the position of the IK world bone, and we need to make sure that this is done in world space. Now we can try modifying where we want to move the bone and see how it affects the hand positioning here. But what we really want is to control the position outside the animation graph. We could do this in a function on the animation blueprint or even in separate code. So to do that, we'll create a vector variable named right hand target. And we can simply connect that to copy bone for the translation. Then finally for the animation blueprint, we want to get the curve value, which will be read from the currently playing animation. And we can see that the hand correctly only moves to the IK target when it's appropriate for the animation. Now let's look at a simple skeleton actor blueprint I created. Let's make sure we set the skeletal mesh components to use our animation blueprint. And then from there, we can set the right hand target variable on the animation instance, which is the animation blueprint. Then the easiest way here for me to demonstrate the use case is to create a variable to select an actor that we want to reach our hand to. And then I'll use that actor here to get the target location. But you could do any number of things here, even have the character hold his hand over a wound he got or something else. Now in the level, I already placed our test actor and we will create a cube static mesh actor and assign that as our target. We can then hit play and move around the cube and see that the hand will procedurally try to reach for it. Now, I used IK bones for this. But to be completely clear with you, this whole procedural hand placement system does not actually require an IK bone, and we can simply skip the IK bone moving step by purely relying on variables. The IK bone can potentially add some flexibility, but it seems to me to be a recurring theme that the use cases for IK bones have alternatives that don't really require them. Anyway, next is a very common use case of IK bones that I won't go into as much detail with, but involves using them as an intermediate step in foot IK, where the goal is to place your feet level with and at the height of the ground your character happens to be standing on. You see this, for example, in the Lyra sample project, where the process for doing this executed in every animation tick is roughly the following steps. One, we set the IK foot bone to the position of the actual foot bone. Two, we use traces from above and below the IK foot bone to find the exact ground location. Three, set the IK foot bone's position and optionally rotation to the traced location. And finally four, 
set the actual foot bones location to the location of the IK foot. Now this clearly works, but similar to the hand reaching use case, I personally haven't found any reason to use the IK bone as an intermediate step like it's done here. For this process, you can easily replace it with a simple intermediate vector or a transform variable, which would presumably also perform better. Now I'm uncomfortable questioning Liver's workflow here, as it's meant to represent best practices and is created by the Unreal Epic team themselves. So if you found any reason to use IK bones as an intermediate like this, please let me know in the comments. Now the next use case is what got the closest to convincing me that IK bones are actually necessary. And that's animating the hand to which the weapon is attached independently of the weapon. Think of a character holding a bolt action rifle with two hands. He would need to play an animation for the right hand to rack the bolt back, but since our weapons are typically attached to the right hand, the rifle would follow along as the hand is moving, causing some nonsensical results. We could solve this using IK bones by having an IK weapon bone define the position where the rifle should be, and then make sure the weapon gets attached to that bone specifically, at least temporarily. We can then move the right hand freely relative to the weapon. But again, we do have an alternative way to solve this, for example by temporarily parenting the rifle to the left hand instead, with the correct offset applied. Now the final use case, which I can't speak to as I don't have a lot of experience with it, but that's for retargeting animations between characters to properly align, for example, hands for characters with different proportions. I know IK bones are frequently used here, but I also know that virtual bones are also often used, seemingly to the same effect. So the way I see it after my extensive research is there's really no use case left for IK bones where they're necessary or even where they're preferable. They seem to have been a necessary tool in the past, but with virtual bones and more flexible IK nodes that can take variables, they're at the very least optional and perhaps just outdated. Now I hope this helped you understand what IK bones are and how they've been and continue to be used. In the next video in this series, I'll be covering virtual bones, which are similar in some ways, but a bit more complex in others. I show how they can solve more difficult swimming issues with the hands failing to stay on a weapon, and we'll cover some other common use cases as well. It is my goal to always bring you straight to the point and useful tutorials. If you like what you see, hit like and subscribe. And if you want to see more of me develop my top-down skill-based tribal management game, check out the main channel. Thank you for watching.